Okay. All right, we're here today with uh, expert colorectal surgeon, Dr. Bailey, and he's from Texas at the Methodist Hospital. And we just want to talk in general about uh, patients who have anal incontinence or fecal incontinence and how we manage them and when do we generally choose to uh, go to an artificial sphincter mechanism? Well, the artificial sphincter, I guess, is, is sort of one of the last resorts. Our, our preference is to use the patient's own tissues if they work uh, to do a, a, a sphincterplasty if the patient has an innervated sphincter. Uh, if that isn't the case, uh, which happens in trauma patients and in people who have neurogenic problems where the pudental nerves have been damaged for some reason, then the, uh, then the sort of uh, heavy guns or the the more complex ways of managing the, the incontinence come into play. And the, the, I think that really in most patients where we're going to do an artificial sphincter, the alternative uh, treatment for them is to have a colostomy. Now this man we're going to do today already has a colostomy, uh -huh. but he's hoping to get rid of it. I see. The, uh, so basically, it's a it's a procedure that we don't do terribly frequently, uh, just because most people that have incontinence can have something simpler done. The the my experience with this operation, the artificial sphincter, is that that if it doesn't get infected and have a complication, uh, it works extremely well. They they have a, a high degree of continence and are, are very, very satisfied with the operation. Okay. But uh, in the in the original series, about 30% of the uh, the patients who had an artificial sphincter had some infection that led to explantation, having the sphincter removed. The uh, the instance now with probably more experience as well as a, a better combination of antibiotics uh, is, is probably closer to 20%. Okay. And the people that do get infected and have to have their, their artificial sphincter removed, and most of the most of the infections occur early, within the first two or three weeks. There are some late problems where the, the sphincter erodes into the tissues and then has to be removed for that reason, but those are relatively uncommon. Okay. So essentially, once they've been implanted and it's yeah, a fortunate thing not to have it infected, patients tend to do pretty well the, the with The patient them. satisfaction with this is really quite high. Okay. Uh, going here. Dr. Bailey, can you describe for us how does the mechanism itself actually work? I mean, what is an artificial sphincter anyway? Well, the artificial sphincter is a, is a prosthetic device that... Uh, it was built on originally the technology of the inflatable penile prosthesis for, for uh, impotence. Okay. Uh, then, then the urologist came along and, and developed one of these uh, for urinary incontinence and then finally it was developed for fecal incontinence. And there are three parts to the uh, device. There's a cuff that goes around the anus which has a, a, an inflatable area on the inside of it that actually, when it's filled with fluid, compresses the anal canal. And then there's a reservoir which uh, sits in the suprapubic area, which is used to hold the fluid in the system and actually provides the appropriate pressure to keep the cup inflated. And then the third part of the system is a pump mechanism that sits in the scrotum in men and in the labium in women, which allows you to transfer the fluid from the cuff that keeps the anus closed, uh, transfer it back into the reservoir, thereby opening the anus and, uh, and letting the patient defecate.